Hi, morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a fresh episode of AI Makers Unpacked series. Morning because we are recording and uh, kind of streaming this session at nine o'clock in the morning. And we've got a special guest today. Uh, guest is Naveen Xavier. And the best way to describe Naveen is uh, he's been challenging the status quo. And let me explain what this challenge is, uh, status quo means. And first of all, Naveen Xavier is uh, uh, Managing Director of Asset and Wealth Management Technology at uh, JP Morgan. Uh, he has an illustrious career, which is divided into two phases, two phases rather, and that's where I say he's a special guest for us. One phase where he's been into defense. He's done multiple technology-led projects in defense, but he's also been on the front line of the defense, uh, and he'll talk about further on that. On the other side, he switched to corporate career. Not, uh, I would say, an easy task. I'm sure uh, we have a lot of uh, insights and nuggets to gain from uh, his experience. Uh, he's been an entrepreneur when he moved into the corporate side. And from the entrepreneurial shift, he moved to ABG, uh, leading their analytics, uh, larger, large portfolio of analytics and AI over there. And I've recently moved to JP Morgan. So welcome, Naveen uh, Xavier, to AI Makers and Vaccines. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. Uh, Naveen, uh, as I was going through a prof professional journey, very interesting. And this is, I think, for the first time we have a leader uh, who's uh, a cut from the rest. Uh, and you're also cut above the rest. But when I say <laughs> the cut uh, from the rest is, usually I've seen the professional path of the analytics AI leaders. I mean, they come from the ranks of the best of the breed, uh, uh, management and technology institutes, go through... Uh, the organizations which have done a lot of stuff into analytics AI has been, been the pioneers of the front runners and then go through a path in terms of leading large PLs or teams or but you've come from the other side of the I would say picture and this is where I want you to kind of unravel. Uh, let's bring this conversation to the two phases. The phase where you were in the army, you were in the defense. Uh, what exactly you uh, went through over there, what did you do over there, and the phase two, which will be the enterprise version, uh, and a complete, I would say, a Naveen Xavier 2.0, what went over there. So let's start with something. How did you started your career into Army? Can you please delve into that, please? Sure, Samir. Um, so as you said, I mean, firstly, cut about the rest. Uh, that's really, I hope, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, probably for the audience to decide on that. But uh, any which way, just to start, um, as you said, yes, I, I do firmly believe that uh, the journey which I've had is significantly different from how the other uh, colleagues of mine whom I've interacted in this industry. So let me start the story and it's going to be a little long. So you may have to probably help me shorten it up wherever required. Um, I come from a very uh, 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 a normal family in Bangalore, did my schooling in Bangalore. And just like every aspirant in the 11th and 12th standard, I thought I'm going to do my engineering and, and go out with it. But one thing led to the other, and I got uh, really enchanted by this whole idea of defense. And uh, that's when after my 12th, uh, when I was 17 years old, I joined the National Defense Academy at Kadak Pasla. So <clears throat> coming from a, a background where there were my father and mother both were teachers, and suddenly getting into this uh, was a totally different uh, environment for me. Um, suddenly from studies, it became more around um, about your physical fitness, your your mental agility, and the whole thing. So, three years in National Defense Academy. I mean, the tagline says it's the institution which converts boys to men. Uh, so that was a grueling um, and a very, um, I would say, life shaping experience for me, where you really go through the uh, the thick and thin, create friends who are uh, who bond with you for life. And the kind of camaraderie, the spirit, and the professional uh, learnings around the entire uh, the tactical and the strategic warfare part of it was a very, very, I would say, probably now in hindsight, uh, one of the, the best phases of my life, uh, really getting bounded, right? So that's where I was. And um, then I went into IMA, got commissioned into the core of signals, which is really the, the tech arm of the Indian Army. And that's something because uh, right from my childhood, I always was... Um, more keen on the technology side, where the sciences really appealed to me. And that's why I took the core of signals. But that was more around telecom. So the initial part of my journey uh, was um, around uh, communication networks, whether it's microwave networks, satellite networks, optical fiber networks. And that's that's really the part where I work. 
I also had the opportunity, uh, Samir, and uh, to serve the nation as part of Op Vijay in Kargil and Op Parakram at, at Rajauri. Uh, so these were uh, two operations which I was, um, I mean, with which I was there in the front lines and having experienced that entire, um, I would say, the, the confusion mayhem around the period which was there. So that was another, again, life-shaping experience uh, to have gone through that. And um, yeah, I'm glad that I could be of service to the nation and that. So that's 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 the initial part. Uh, but all along, I've been more um, uh, interested in getting into the nitty gritties of uh, how do these things work? What are the protocols? How can we really get these things to be done? Because in the army, it's not about really uh, using uh, commercial of this type software. There's a lot of proprietary things that we develop. So I was involved about uh, with a lot of um, proprietary software development projects um, where we were actually defining the protocol stack for the tactical communication systems, rewriting protocol stacks. So these were very uh, interesting projects, which um, which helped me become very sound uh, and a hands-on knowledge on the entire aspect of it. And somewhere around the line, uh, down the line is when um, this whole aspect of um, uh, data, the importance of data uh, and how we need to uh, start managing and handling because we pre-generate a lot of data came in and I was uh, lucky to have uh, to get involved as part of these projects uh, in terms of uh, designing these software systems which are real-time systems uh, for the different forces <clears throat> both in communication and in uh, a warfare system management system or decision support systems is something that I worked on and somewhere in between I got mm -hmm. really interested in this whole data story handling this large amounts of data uh, and this is where I started doing a deep dive into this um, entire journey. Uh, and I, one thing led to the other uh, and the whole analysis of this data part, handling large amounts of data uh, unfolded. And that became a kind of passion which I grew on to. And so that was that is where I was. And um, I think life was going well. And that's when um, in 2008, um, the, when the Mumbai attacks happened, the government uh, decided there's something around terrorism that needs to be done. Um, and they came up with a concept called NAT grid, which is really National Intelligence Grid. Um, and uh, this is uh, started by Captain Raghu Raman, who was a well-known uh, person. He was the CEO of NAT grid. And um, the whole uh, idea was uh, we as a nation have so much of data. We have a data around uh, when your, your um, communication, that is your phone calls, your driving license, your passport, your uh, financial transactions and everything. Is there a way to be able to analyze this data, to identify patterns in the data, to predict um, incidents of error? And that's really the concept that I got involved and worked along with the government as part of this organization. It was, uh, I think, a one in a million opportunity to be a part of this core team to develop or design this, uh, this application. Um, I cannot talk about much of the details around it, but nonetheless, it was... Uh, uh, an opportunity for me to work some, with some of the best minds, both academically and also in the corporate world, and also from the government part, from from both within India and abroad, to have interacted with these individuals um, and created this framework, which uh, which is today uh, alive and is probably um, a very effective organization as we speak. So that's that's really um, Samir um, the whole journey where I was so long in the army and with the uh, government on deputation is this whole thing, which has probably built the base around uh, a sound technology foundation. That's because that's my, uh, that's my, um, uh, my passion. Uh, the ability to conceive large scale projects and to drive them, uh, to really work along with multiple stakeholders and to be able to get them implemented on ground. Uh, that's, the, that's the whole part. The whole ability to convince the important um, decision-making bodies around this is the way we need to do and to give get a seat at the table from a technology perspective to be able to drive decisions. So that's that's really to sum it up the, the experience um, which I was able to get. And obviously, being an uniformed uh, uh, soldier, I think uh, something which automatically comes into everybody is the aspect of discipline, the ability to really focus your energies and say that, okay, this is a no matter what, you have to get it delivered. It's not like, okay, I can say that I tried and it gets done. I think we are inculcated with, an, with a go and win um, uh, in whatever, whatever situation. 
to find the best solution out. So those, those are, I think, the few facets, few core capabilities that I developed, which today have helped me migrate from a very different environment within the army and the government into the corporate. So yeah, this is this is the first part of my journey, uh, and I'll, I'll take a pause over here. Awesome. In fact, uh, I was just trying to absorb uh, because it's so fascinating. Because within that, as you rightly mentioned, not only you've been in, onto the front line, but uh, were able to actually see and witness uh, the technology advancements uh, Indian Army is trying to go through. And specifically, as you mentioned about some of the ingredients, what comes in as part of the people who are uh, uh, serving the nation is this whole discipline, diligence, the ability to get the things done. Now, while th this is something I'm sure uh, a bit of, I would say, pullback, what made you switch? I'm sure there would have been a trigger. And that to a stage where you started your own data analytics uh, firm, actually. Yeah. Because really, we would find people in uniform first uh, kind of uh, moving to a different venture altogether. And when they're stepping into corporate side, you took that audacious call, if I call it that way, of being an entrepreneur. What what really prompted you, Naveen, over there? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that, that's, that's a huge um, leap of faith that I took, uh, Samir. And it, it was not an easy decision. So I have completed overall, if you see, um, four years of training and 20 years in the army. Um, and uh, it, it, it was a great run so far. Uh, and I also am a firm believer, you get to only live once, you might as well try out everything possible. Uh, so um, it's again, I, I would say is that um, there are many things which are planned and there are many things which happen just by chance. And I, now when I look back, this says that probably it's a very rare opportunity. So um, I happened to uh, come across a, a very, um, let's say, is a very dynamic personality, uh, Dr. Sam Petroda, uh, when I was a mad grid. And that's when I uh, interacted with Dr. Sam Petroda. He's a serial entrepreneur, a very well-known person in the field of telecom. And uh, a chance encounter with him. And um, one thing led to the other. And he said, Naveen, you have this capability. You've been driving all these things. Uh, do you think, uh, or why don't you create, why don't we together create something of our own uh, and build something as a niche capability, which could probably um, uh, uh, be a successful venture. So, and that's when uh, probably there was a lot of talk. It's in the two, it, it's, uh, it's early 2010, 12. That's when this whole discussion happened. And that's when I think there was a lot of uh, talk around entrepreneurship, the whole ability to probably create an organization which is meaningful and um, you really feel that you have created something of value. So um, having been in a very secure environment where within the central government with a big pay scale and the ability to grow, uh, to suddenly say that I want to leave this and come into a very risk-prone environment where out of 100 startups, there could probably be 90 startups that fail, um, but um, the whole, uh, I would say, the charm of creating something of your own and, and the whole, uh, there was a serial from TVF and that whole thing about two beer, uh, you flow along with it. So a few things all fell into place. And, um, and luckily, I had the support of my family, my wife and my children, because finally, I would be getting out with a secure income and come into an area that is going to be no income. And in fact, there'll be investing a lot of my money, my time in terms of creating this uh, this organization. So got together with a few of my friends uh, and we created this company called DataVal Analytics. Right? Um, and again, now in hindsight, uh, it's a big risk because not having worked in a corporate, not having the the network and the connections that you you would have been privy to having served for 20 years in a, in a typical corporate environment and suddenly coming in here and trying to to, to make a case that why we could probably deliver a better solution than the others was not an easy task. But uh, I really uh, kudos to the team that we built. We grew from probably um, the no one to, uh, to a, to a mid-sized company and uh, to have created uh, an analytics boutique company where we could really deliver solutions, um, uh, not only within India, also abroad, around agriculture, pharmaceuticals, energy, um, and uh, online uh, retail. So there were so many solutions that we created over here that it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful journey. And as, as I said, um, 
it's really about adopting change uh, if i would have been rigid and said that this is the way of life and this is the way a simple example some of this probably is if i was in the army and i called up a person in my office and i said we need to do this and the person would say yes sir and uh, and say jai hind sir and go out right that there's no there's no need for me to explain myself to say that why do we need to do it it's like it's the the kind of organization the culture that's there and that's required from a, from a uh from a from a defense perspective but now here when you come in it's in, into a corporate or into a startup environment it's not really about telling those um, whether they are employees of my or the or my clients but this is the way we need to do it right it's about it's more about uh, all of us getting together say that this is what we believe and to start getting them equally passionate about what we need to be able to deliver so these are the things which i really had to Uh, break myself down and again recreate myself in a new form uh, so that um, i could really make it work uh, really proud of some of the ach- achievements that we did at data well analytics one is uh, building this along with my friends of my own and also the team that we built uh, in fact one interesting um, i mean milestone in our uh, in our startup is um, facebook had come up with a challenge uh, called babby uh, it's 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 a toy task it's an ai task where there are 20 tasks and um, it's about uh, spatial correlation time coreference resolution which otherwise very difficult for a machine to understand in language right and uh, we built this ai system uh, with our own proprietary knowledge representation uh, which was able to beat the state of the art um, uh, the results which were there at that point in time and we got a complete 100% on all the 20 tasks and we actually presented to facebook and uh, got the so it was it was an achievement um, for a very small company in bangalore in some corner to go up into the global space and say that hey we have come over here and we can build solutions that uh, globally can be appreciated on that so yeah that's that's really a, a great uh, experience and a humbling experience if i would say as around working with uh, companies getting them to accept them to get our solutions deployed within their environment was um, all about um, uh, i think a lot of satisfaction in being able to do that and creating a culture where we believe that um, the the concepts that we had learned in the army of small teams and and to get that spirit working uh, together uh, some of them and all of them still work with me uh, and there are um, uh, i think these are lifelong friends that we have created as part of the startup and a wonderful uh, journey as part of data well awesome one thing i was getting more curious uh, when you took a shift actually and these are two different segments i mean uh, uh, defense and corporate world all together and that to in a corporate world the startup now managing stakeholders in army is different managing stakeholders in a corporate world that to in a startup world is different how did you manage to acclimatize over there any any anecdote you could reflect upon Oh, okay and it's um see i'll i'll talk about two things one is um while it is managing stakeholders uh but it's also about um the domain in which you are operating right um i'll give simple example um when uh, we were presenting to kiran bazumdar sir uh, we had a, 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 a we had a presentation to her and we were talking about the solutions that we can i was just ruminating within myself the whole time when i was uh, working within um, uh, the technology domain or within the army api for me meant um, application programming interface right uh, but when we are talking to kiran wasn't that sure it's all about the active pharmaceutical ingredient right so one is um, the realization really i would say is that when you're going and trying to pitch a solution which is while it's technologically it may be the same uh, across the region it's very very important for us to understand the domain okay right? so um, in my uh, in my experience the whole 20 25 years has been in the uniform in the government the bureaucratic channels as you said it's a very different um, um uh, when the way things move it's all around files it's around noting sheets it's around approvals it's around convincing them getting data in a manner which you could probably put for uh, the 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 i would say is that the, the validity of the argument and um 
the decision making was very different here when we come in and we are speaking to the to the stakeholders in the corporate it's all about business impact it's all about okay uh, what is the value that i'm going to see at the end of it so um, for us we had to really change the whole language it's it's like it's it's a very different way of if i would have stuck to the same old way of convincing my bosses when i was in the army and the government and the way i was trying to convince when i'm talking to my clients in the startup it's it's a it's a it's it's like probably chinese and arabic it's two different languages totally right so yeah to your point um whenever we uh, this is i think one thing is we were quick learners uh, we had some good advisors and definitely dr sam being a part of the board helped us in terms of articulating this all said and done but uh, we as as a company were able to make that shift uh, make to i mean reorient ourselves so that we have to speak in the language no point in going and speaking to them in a the language they don't understand about okay this is how we would do it and this is the architecture and this is the output and this is the performance and that's all fine but if i actually do not go and hit the nail on the head around okay this is what is going to be the value this is what is going to be the impact that you can do and this is the efficiency that we can bring about nobody would even listen to us right so that's that's really uh, i would say a, a shift in the narrative that we were able to Uh, in corporate because of which we were able to make good headway within within the corporate environment as well sure sure no i think if i reflect uh, navin and as i say that uh, this particular episode for me is unique because uh, never i have actually uh, talked to a leader who has such a varying background and varying background with a very successful and uh, riveting kind of a stuff what you talked about now this transition from a startup to being part of india's largest conglomerate aditya birla group <clears throat> and group which has so many heterogeneous diversified businesses uh, and i'm sure uh, they're all through a different phase in terms of their analytics maturity uh, how did you went i mean go ahead in terms of uh, having these kind of let's say businesses getting convinced about the art of possible with analytics the stakeholders are mature pedigreed uh, with a lot of i would say tenure within the organizations and of course when you have the tenure you also command a certain respect actually uh, with all due regards now and coming with a with a bent of mind that analytics could be a game changer kind of thing how did this entire uh, curve went for you and aditya birla any kind of let's say sharing of experiences over there which you would like to uh, quote feel free please yeah yeah so as i said from one episode of my startup entrepreneurial journey uh, i went into a proper one of the largest conglomerates in india uh, and a corporate environment as uh, the head of digital and ai products right so uh, really the thought was i think the vision of mr birla where he said is you have so many across so many i mean 20 odd sectors and uh, you you've been one of the largest manufacturing to financial institutions to retail fashion and so on so so there were so many facets of this entire business really to make change and to prepare themselves for the future is how can they leverage data how can they leverage analytics and ai to prepare them so that was really the vision and i really I mean, like the whole concept and says to build a capability and again even in this role i had to build the products vertical from scratch um as part of uh, creating so the whole whole idea is how can we create solutions and then scale them in a manner that they can be uh, deployed across various businesses so that we get the maximum uh, impact derived from that right so that's that's the part which came in and as you're saying it's absolutely right uh, when we go into uh, say say for example ultratech which is a cement manufacturer hindalco which is an aluminum uh, manufacturer uh when we go to them and say that this is the way we can do it and this is the way uh, we believe it can add a lot of value that person has been there for at least three decades right and when we, and literally the way they would process this information is i have been there i have done that i have seen this whole thing grow don't come you're just someone who's probably coming and telling that um you would be able to change this we have really squeezed it out and we are at the 99% efficiency can you really make it 99.2 3 or 4 right so there's a lot of skepticism that 
that is meant uh, when we go across and we really pitch and say that we have studied your process, we have studied this as data, and this is what we believe is something that comes in. Now, um, I think just like we say that uh, everybody is not the same, the approach that we have taken is among all these leaders, pick up someone who is ready to champion your cause. Okay? The whole idea is there will be many naysayers, but there will be some naysayers and somebody who's got a strong personality to say that this is something which is a win-win. That is, we are able to build it and they are able to deploy it and derive the value out of it. So this is something uh, which I at least realize really works well. Um, pick up one, deploy it, show the value. And the moment you see um, that this is working, now it becomes a FOMO syndrome. And everybody else says, oh, I should have been on this before. I missed out on this opportunity. And everybody tries to now catch up and say, okay, let me now make good what I should have probably done. So I mean, as an analytics professional, always, okay, always the business operations and everything which is more cost relevant from, from the bottom line to top line, everything is the most important aspect. So suddenly as an analytics professional, when we go in over there, one is, as I said, we have to speak in a language that we are really going to make an impact either to the bottom line or to the top line and prove that from that point of view. And also to show them that if you, if we can partner in this journey, then um, it's, it's definitely something that they would get to gain. And our job, I mean, that's our mandate is to really bring in this kind of efficiency. That, so that's that's the approach that we took. So let me just, uh, and it's more around innovation. And one example, if I can take, we, we used to, have, uh, in, I mean, uh, encourage a culture of uh, uh, creativity and innovation. So we used to have small hackathons within our, within our org, right? And there are many new things which are getting developed as we speak, and there are new models getting generated. So what we used to do is we used to organize these very short sprints and say, okay, people could um, probably uh, develop this out and show this and more like a very test case or a, a, a scenario to be implemented. In one of these hackathons, we would come I mean, while these uh, computer vision models were there and um, uh, one person just built a model, um, uh, Pratik, in fact, and he said that, um, this model is now able to determine if uh, a person is wearing a helmet or is wearing a safety vest or no. And if it is, then it shows that the other person is wearing a helmet. It was a very simple um, uh, thing, two week thing, which, which, which got done. And that idea uh, slowly grew uh, from an idea to a concept, to an MVP, to a product, which, is, which got deployed across factories, across businesses. Right? And it got expanded to further include things like um, uh, worker safety, fire, and uh, uh, the optimization of processes and so many others. So just an idea uh, which we were able to take, showcase it, get someone to believe in it, deploy it in one plant. We just deployed it in the um, Taloja plant of Hindalco. That's the first time. And we, we really went and we said, we will provide everything. We will get everything done. The moment it got done over there and it got appreciated by the chairman, it was actually recognized by the chairman in, um, in the annual uh, meet. And uh, that's when everybody got to know about this. And suddenly it was like a rush. And we really had to create a separate team which could um, handle the kind of uh, the scalability requirements that came up. But yeah, so yeah, it's, it's possible as long as we're able to get these champions who can, who can rally behind your cause. Sure. I want to shift gears, uh, Naveen, because uh, this is absolutely, I would say, fascinating in terms of the journey you talked about. But alongside, I think some of the opinions I want to take and some of your reflections. Uh, analytics AI uh, cannot be done solo. There is a team always behind and team has diversified skills, competencies, uh, attributes. In your opinion, uh, and we always know that, look, in analytics AI, it's not the quantum or the number of the team, it's about the impact, as you rightly said, which uh, is actually there on the table. How have you seen uh, these aspects about the skills and attributes of the team uh, when someone is trying to uh, create an analytics AI team, uh, maybe from the scratch or the start? What should go about in terms of forming that kind of a team from a skills competency? And second, how do you manage this team? Because not only they are pedigree, good kind of, let's say, qualified professionals, but come with a lot of, I would say, 
uh, diversified backgrounds and really carry, uh, carry what I say, a chip on their shoulder in terms of saying, look, I know some of these things very well. So one is that team in terms of how do you question about, how do you go about forming analytics AI teams? And second is how do you then manage these teams? That's a very interesting question and probably one of the most important um, facts as an AI leader because you alone can only do as much. And it's really no matter what capability you have, what charisma you carry and what you speak in the board, uh, it's really about the team which has to go and deliver. And throughout my career, I've been focused on execution uh, and to be able to execute, um, it's the team. It's really the, the chemistry of the team, the ability of the team to get aligned with um, uh, what you believe in and what needs to get done, which really makes it. So that's a very important part of it. So <clears throat> how do we, uh, uh, first, before I get down to how do I create the team, what is the kind of team that I would really like to have? And again, there's no playbook here and everybody may have their own preferences on this. Um, data science, especially, I mean, I, and I've seen this uh, today, um, almost Anybody can start up. I mean, at a, within school or probably in a college, you just need to download some libraries and you start uh, playing around with some things and you, can, you have some data sets and you can start seeing things coming in, right? Uh, one is, and that's that's something which I have always uh, tried to see is that it's not really about just using a model. How much of it can you really use from a conceptual standpoint as to what is the logic and why has this been used and why is if you're not really able to do that that's something which i feel i don't want the superficial uh, data centers while they could probably do it's always better if i had a choice between two people and to be able to get i would like to get a person who's, who's got sound um, skills in terms of understanding data science at a core level that's that's one part the other part is because i am i would say is um uh, focus and uh, and I obsess on execution. The other the 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 term that I use when I when I look at creating a team is not about just data science, but I'm looking at somebody who's a full stack data scientist. That's that's for me that uh, given a choice, this is a better way because in one in one scenario, if I just have a data scientist, then he will need a data engineer who will probably do the data extraction, get that whole thing done and give it. Then you will need an ML engineer who's able to probably understand the whole system as to how the workflow would happen and get it done. And data science would only probably focus on one aspect that is build the model. You give me the data, understand the data variation, as part of it, what is the right thing, tune the model to it and be able to do it. If, if it is possible for a person, while specialization is definitely valuable, to expand your spectrum to beyond data science so that you are able to look at it end to end as to where does the data come in, what are the problem we're solving, what are the business requirement, how does this get deployed? A more wider view is something that I try to encourage among whomever I have incorporated as my team. Let's look at don't don't just say okay that's a that's a totally different job. Somebody else is going to do it. I'm only going because you finally get a solution which is not going to work will will not help. So the whole idea is can we can we have a better visibility? I'm not saying you have to be a um, uh, a jack of all trades, but at least the visibility saying that this is what we need to be able to do and then work along with more probably capable people to be able to do it. So, so one is a core understanding of data science and also a more wider view on data science to call it full stack data science. Right? So that's the first part. The second part is how do I go about creating the team is again, uh, Samir, if I go the same way that industry would typically gravitate towards, then I would look at only reputed institutions and then be able to do it. But having come from a very different background, I myself would like to break the bias. I am more open that um, uh, even with tier two, tier three institutions, uh, there's a lot of talent over there. Uh, especially during my startup days, I, I really uh, saw that uh, while there are people from the IITs and the more well-known organization, we, again, from cost constraints, we did look at tier two, tier three. And it was an eye-opening experience. There's a lot of talent. Yes, you will have to spend some time in terms of um, nurturing them and get them uh, more tuned. But otherwise, these people are very capable in being able to do it. So I really widen the entire net and I'm open to people who have the aptitude and the attitude to be able to take it on. So that way, as I build my teams, I have not been biased only looking through certain things. I have been open. Many people have reached out to me through LinkedIn. I've been considered various opportunities and very different kind of people uh, rather than the typical career consultant route is what we've been able to take and build the team. 
So as I build the team, one is um, when we create the whole team structure, I just see what am I trying to deliver. Uh, this is what in my current role. This is what I need to be able to do, and then work backwards and say what is the org structure that would be best suited to be able to meet these goals that I need to be able to do, and what are the skill sets that I need, and also look at it from more long term as to how should this team be organized. What is their growth plan so that when they come in over here, they should not feel who oh, have come in, but two years from now, what do I do? And then start looking at probably getting. So can we look at a more wider term and a longer term part of it so spend some time towards creating this org structure and then start filling the right people for the right kind of role um the 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 the, the selection process needs to be a little more rigorous need to get uh, multiple rounds get different perspectives from different people and uh, uh, make sure that we have the a right mix of talent and and that's where right uh, and one of one more big piece which i see missing in data in data scientists is the ability to communicate So one is they are very good in coding. They are very good in probably writing down, uh, I mean, creating the best model in the end, but very poor when it comes to communication. Right. So yeah, I mean, all of them are not equal, but they need to either focus towards it. But you need to have these people who are uh, the ones who are interfacing with the business end of it and the ability to translate. Because if I have a very core technically qualified person. uh it's a sure shot recipe for disaster if i just send that person for a business meeting and say that you go and handle it so you need to have these people in between who are uh who are leaders who understand the domain and who understand technology so that this translation is done between the technology solution to what the business wants so all these are the facets which i probably in the the ingredients that i look at as i create the team um uh, and um, so far touch wood um the the basics of having created this team has supported me and the only part which i i provide to my team is i do not micromanage uh, because mm. uh, it's really not for me to uh, tell them okay you do this i would like to know things because again as i have a keen interest in the technology and to be able to do i do try to get down as much but i have the the flexibility and the, i mean i provide the flexibility to my team and the leads to be able to come up with their own solutions and come up with their suggestions so that my whole thing is more collaborative is that okay this is my lead and i say that this is your 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 owning this while i'm that support and i give them the confidence that if it succeeds it is your success and if it fails then it is my failure so you don't worry about it i want to give you uh, the the cushion uh, to say that i am there for you i am here to support you and i am not here to put you out in the open go ahead implement it i am here to give you all the uh, clear all the obstacles give you all guidance as required so that they feel as much uh, in terms of delivering it rather than me pushing it pushing it down to them and say that you need to be able to do this okay this is the timeline why haven't you met this rather than making it a very um, i would say a mechanical thing it's a more collaborative and a more um, uh, equal opportunity provided to all of them to drive so that's 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 really i think my mantra which i have been able to use and um, hopefully my team should speak on my behalf but it's it's worked out uh, well for me wonderful wonderful quick question navin any professional regrets oh. <laughs> uh quite frankly no i think um uh i uh, there's something which we cannot do as as humanity but you just get one life and uh I want to try everything. I want to take this uh, ride up and down and go through all the uh, the adventures of life. Um, and I'm very happy. I mean, many people say is that oh, you, if you wouldn't have gone to the army and you couldn't have, uh, you wouldn't have done this, you would have had a, a very different life. Uh, but no, I I think uh, wherever I whatever journey I have taken is probably the ideal one. And each experience has made me the person I am today. So no regrets, Anil. Great. as i call it this particular session challenge the status quo i have one thing towards the end which is uh, you live only once and i think a manifestation uh, navin uh, which comes out from the talk uh, and uh, for the first time in the multiple episodes i've done i've actually kept quiet because i was left listening with the rapt attention in terms of the various i would say aspects you went through because uh, not only it was absorbing but also i would say very uh, i would say intriguing aspect of looking at things in terms of saying okay uh some of these careers some of these moves which is what you did not only were planned but you went ahead in terms of uh, executing those with very clinical approach and i would say a lot of that if you uh, think in the high side is attributed to the background you belong which is 
where the army, the defense, uh, and this core diligence, that whole strategic kind of orientation comes in from there as a part of your core uh, input over there. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate the kind of insights you provided because I'm sure this would be a treasure trove of learning for our uh, listeners because uh, as I always say that, look, there are leaders and there are leaders who are different, uh, bespoke and absolutely, I would say, cut from, uh, I would say, the rest kind of a thing. And this is what you are. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samir. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it was really a pleasure to speak to you and probably go down memory lane. Thank you for that. I uh, wish you the very best and wish 3AI the very best in the future. Thank you. And uh, this brings to an end, uh, audience, uh, for our AI Makers Unpack series with Naveen Xavier. And uh, 3AI, by the way, is India's largest platform for AI analytics leaders, aspirants, and professionals. Log on to www.3AI.in. Thank you so much. Thanks.